Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from where are we? Hudson, New York. We're at Mara's house. Live from Mara's house. This is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Mara's living room. And welcome to the show. And welcome to my new nose, everybody. Welcome to Makeover Monday. And speaking of a makeover, I might need plastic <laughs> surgery on this schnoz of mine. I don't know if anyone saw oh, this. Raghunath, it breaks my heart to see that schnozola of yours. Oh, yeah. You know, I tell you, the last five days have been so mis... Christian's just been moving me like I was sure ready was to Christian go. So I'm not going to tell the whole story. You know the whole story. I'm not going to tell the whole story, but I was ready to go somewhere. And Christian said, on my way out to go somewhere, Christian said, plans are changed. Hmm. Your nose is going to be smashed. And I just tripped. I tripped holding a cup of coffee. And I didn't want to spill the coffee on my mom's white rug. So I just didn't put out my hands to protect myself. And my face, stumbling forward, smashed into a dresser with had metal plate poles, Ouch. and it left these crescent-shaped moons in my nose. And they were really deep and really. And so I went to, I went to, you know, I was going to go to Kostuba's house and go to uh, uh, urgent care. And then I called urgent care and like, are you kidding? We've been doing nothing but COVID tests all day long. The place is packed. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to go upstate. I was like, Mara, find some place upstate so i don't have to deal with the you know the emergency rooms in new york city we got right into a place and they started stitching my nose up was it, they gave you good care <laughs> mara will tell you it was funny because <laughs> she was right there the, the, the nurse was like oh my god this is horrible this is a mess this is like ground she beef <laughs> I, she, I, 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 the, she said after that. like 10 minutes of telling me how bad my nose was she's like I, i'm not a plastic surgeon i can't do this i was like i was holding her hand saying you can do this. You're the best here. I have full faith in you. You're going to make it through this. I was like coaching her. I was like, I think you can do this. You've done this before. Pull it. To, take a few deep breaths. I think you're going to make it through this. It was, I don't know. I have a big rubber. I don't, yeah, you guys. Knew. You know what it looks like? It looks like um, those <laughs> those photographs that like hockey goalies before they used to wear masks. You know what? I you see it feels like that. Yeah. You know, two listeners uh, wrote in and says it, it looks sort of sexy. It looks cool. So, yeah. It's cool. <laughs> so I'm, I'll, cool. I'll take sexy. Tough, at least. <laughs> sexy meets deformed. But you know what? We're going to see what happens. They're like, well, you can get plastic surgery or you can just leave a gaping. Okay. And she was, uh, you know, she was like, Should, if I stitch it up, it might make your nose look like you're always flaring your nostrils. So I was that like, wouldn't oh, be good. No. Well, the, here's the <laughs> interesting thing. At any minute, you can trip and smash your head. We heard that story the other day of um, Bobby Marchand and the, her her child had those past life memories because her old boyfriend fell down the stairs and died. I mean, you can die in a moment and, and it's just not when you're planning to die, you know, and it, it just gives you those wake up calls like any moment. Everything can change immediately. There can be a hairpin turn in our life and therefore we have to remember Krishna. Well, that, therefore, there's that verse in Bhagavatam, 10th Canto. Padad, padam, padam, yadvi, padam, padam, natesham. 
Yeah. At every step, there's so much danger. That, that it, yeah. This that this world that we're living in. This is the place uh, where there is danger at every step. Yeah. It's only when you think you're safe that you're in total illusion. Like, well, I'm home now. Everything's cool. Wrong. No. Now you're in bigger illusion. Hmm. It's but almost you know like what? you need to be a little bit in anxiety to be mentally healthy. Once you think you're safe, you're a fool. But but Krishna I was reading this great verse yesterday. Now Krishna is from the, from the tenth canto. Um, Krishna says, you know, I take away fear for my devotee who approaches my lotus feet. And it really is true. Like the understanding of Krishna is not putting your head in the sand and saying, oh, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm going to live forever. And it's not living with total anxiety like a lot of us do in this world because the world is filled with anxiety. You're going to lose everything you love. Welcome. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. You're going to lose everything you love. But in, in Bhakti, Krishna relieves that anxiety by by shedding light on our re, our reality. We accept that we will lose everything that we love, but we feel a, a, like a cradling almost, like a baby Cradle. feels cradled by Krishna, and therefore it does in the in the in the deepest sense remove anxiety without any medication. Um, what do you think about that? You like it? Yeah. Now no, you I say I like it. I'm not going to say that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he said that the other day. I said, "Now you say me like." He goes, "I'm going to say that." <laughs> but yeah, right. yeah. Were you feeling fear when your face was going? Well, down? I thought I snapped my nose. Ever get like whacked After in the nose hit. really hard? And I was like, I just broke, and blood started gushing everywhere. Yeah. And did coffee, coffee is everywhere. The coffee did spill. After all, yeah, yeah. Coffee is everywhere. Oh, anyway, it was a whole. Anyway, Rogo. Krishna's Good to got be some here. special plan for you. Krishna's got a special is. plan he's, going he's on. He's sending you through all kind of things lately. All kinds you know? of crazy stuff is happening to me. And you're just sitting there rocking in your chair watching it. <laughs> me and Mara were going, this would never happen at Kastuba. This would never happen. It could, happen. It could happen today. It could happen. No, it, could, it, it could, but it could happen before the show it is over. It doesn't happen to you. It could. Every time something naughty happens to me, I was like, this will never happen at Kastuba. Okay. I anyway. had a lot of things like that happened to me before. Anyway, I want to thank Mara because well, I want to thank Mara for yeah. taking taking care of me and bringing Good. me through all that. Thank, thank you, Mara. Mara. And now I'm here. Um, and uh, next and interesting yeah. thing yeah. is uh, Lal Govinda, a, a regular other out there, said you got to watch this movie. You guys are going to love it. So we watched this movie last night. Incredible movie. It's called The Shack. The Shack. It's on Netflix. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to share the whole movie with you guys. I'm going to let Mara give a little bit of a synopsis because I did fall asleep, which I do. But I will say it has deep <laughs> spiritual underpinnings. But uh, Mara, you want to just give a little blurb of this movie? Um, so the main character's daughter, his little daughter, gets abducted and killed. Yeah, it's a so this it's guy a feel just, good. It's one of those feel good yeah. Christmas movies. UFO <laughs> abduction? No, no, just like a, a crazy regular man. person. Yeah, Abductor, crazy man. Yeah. And so this guy just and you know he had been this guy had been beaten by his father, who was an alcoholic, who was also a member of the church when he was a kid. Oh, they yeah, flash yeah. back to that. So he's got a lot of anger towards mm -hmm. God, and it's like very much um, trying to answer the you know Problem why is there evil. evil yeah exactly why is there evil in this world and why do bad things happen to good people if god is always with us okay um so yeah so then he goes on a journey he meets god uh yeah it's a great it's a great god. movie yeah oh. three forms of god so they, they talked it out yeah they talked it out okay it's beautiful okay. he heals yeah he heals himself comes back I'll, yeah i'll try to check it out it, it's got nothing to do with Shaq, the basketball player <laughs> I understand that now. You understand? I told Costuba it was about Shaq O'Neal. He's like, really? A spiritual movie about Shaq? I was like, yeah. There's a book, too. The people on the message board are saying the book is excellent, too. Oh, really? Okay. I was like, yeah. Rognath, he's not called The Shaq. He's called Shaq. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway, um, it's Makeover Monday. And not only we're not going to talk about Makeover Monday, too. You know what to do about that. Just get your act together. And okay. <laughs> But we do have a great, nugget. I tell you, we have a great uh, nugget today. Okay. Uh, um, uh, You're going to pull it up? You didn't pull it up. You don't have it ready. 
Well, you know what? Let's do it already. You send it to me at different places. First, I you send it, it twice, so that way, either way, wherever you go, you're gonna get it. You didn't send it to my. Uh, oh, you know why? Because any case, you want me to? Read All right, it? here All it right. is. I'm gonna read it off my phone, sir. Right. Who's it? But from? this is a good one. Is is it? I, I I wish I came up with. I think I actually say this. He may have gotten it from you. He may have got this from me. I actually say this, but he was a little bit more articulate. Okay. Okay. Who? Listen to this. His Who? name is David Suzuki. Suzuki. Okay. Suzuki. <laughs> He's not a <laughs> Polish Japanese guy. <laughs> it's not Suzuki. Okay. <laughs> it's David Suzuki. This is the founder of Suzuki. Uh, he, motorcycles. He's from Canada. He's 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 like a scientist, but he also had popular television shows, and he's quite the um, environmental activist. He had popular television shows. Yeah, in Canada, at least PBS and. That kind of thing. Oh, okay. I thought you were like the Partridge Family or something. Not like okay, that. here we go. Ready? The way we see the world shapes the way we treat it. If a mountain is a deity, what? Right. Mm -hmm. If a mountain is a deity, not a pile of ore. If a forest is a sacred grove, what? Right, not timber. If other species are biological kin, not resources. Mm -hmm. Or if the planet is our mother, not an opportunity. Then we will treat each other with greater respect. Thus is the challenge to look at the world from a different perspective. Mm. How great. How great is that? Yeah. It's it's interesting. But then you told me he's an atheist. Yeah, that's what I read on Wikipedia. You know what's weird about that? Like, then you just have to like concoct that the Earth is your mother because there's no such thing as that, right. or concoct that other species are not merely just resources. Because there's, here's where I go with this one again. What there is no such thing as selfishness in a world that is nothing. Selfishness itself is just fabricated. It might make you feel meaning there's no ethical there's no ethical metric okay, in a nothingness nice. in a nothingness world. Right. There's at least there's no universal standard. Um, absolute but, one. But anyway, I don't even want to get have their own the opinion. Yeah. I don't want to get into the esoterica of it. Okay. It's a beautiful statement. And it's true. Especially well, what, since we accept mountains as beings. Well, you know, the, the way that I read this, and it's interesting because we're going to read really interesting stuff today from Bob with Tom. It's almost like saying the opposite, but it's not the opposite. In other words, here he's saying that if we see nature um, within nature, if we, if we see a sacredness in it, mm. then he says it'll, it'll affect the way that we treat each other. And what we're going to hear today is all, and what we've been hearing is that if we treat each other well, we'll also be able to perceive the sacredness in nature. So it's kind of like when you start to see the sacred anywhere, you'll start to see it everywhere, you know, or at least if you see it for real, you know, he's, yeah. anyway, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. I, I like but I do appreciate what he says. You know, I, I do like that statement. And, and let's, let's get into what we got today and it'll relate to this, I think. Yeah. Anything else? Any announcements? Any any holiday announcements, Mara? Uh, we holiday. do have some announcements. Not so much holiday announcements. <clears throat> we have. I was hoping more of a holiday announcement. <laughs> Sorry. Can, can you make one up? <laughs> bringing you uh, good Kringle cheer and joy. Yeah, bringing you good cheer and joy. There's Bach Deer Recovery Group meetings today there at one and nine thirty, and then tomorrow morning at six thirty a.m. Ariel Castilla is teaching uh, asana class for our Patreon members. Oh, she's, well, nice. she's nice. She did you just nice. say she's nice? I said she's nice. Did you say that? I did. That's Krishna miracle. <laughs> okay. Um, Those are everywhere. Yeah. Is that it? That's it. All right. Narayanam namaskritya naram chayeva narutamam devim saraswatim vyasam tatojayam mudirayat. Before we start in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest? One should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. Unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. And to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta Prayesh Vabhadrishu Nitchim Bhagavat Sevaya. Bhagavati Uttama Shloki Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki. By regular attendance and classes in the Bhagavatam, and by rendering service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated. 
and loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is praised with transcendental songs, will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Gyanat Timurandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksur Un Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha. I was born in darkness, and my teachers are opening my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. Mara, he it. Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 29, Text 22. 22. Did we do 21? It's 21. Okay. <laughs> I thought we did, but <laughs> maybe we did. Huh? Do it again. Why don't you, I tell you what, Grogu, why don't you start at Text 20 again? Because there's a section here now. Text 20 okay. through 27 are going to speak about the futility of superficial religious ritualistic demonstration and highlight the importance of spiritual vision in other words seeing god everywhere seeing god in the heart of every living being seeing god in one's own heart that's going to it's going to it's going to downgrade you know yeah. not that not that the rituals can't be effective in helping us understand these things but in other words if you're just on that service level you haven't gone very deep and even some heavy heavy uh Exactly. Hey, you know what, Kasub? I want to give a real yeah. shout out to all the people who are coming out of the closet over the holiday season and telling their family, I'm a Harry. <laughs> There's a lot of people who are going to have that conversation in a few days. They're going to be, you know what? I believe in God or I believe in there is a goddess of learning. I believe in a man named Vyasadeva. And they're going to try to explain it to their family member and they're going to get ostracized for it. <laughs> And I want to give a little shout out in advance. You know who you are. If, if you're one of those persons, you can put it up on the Zoom board, people, because you're about to get your cover blown. And you're going to try. You think you're going to convert them, me even maybe. You think you're going to find the weak one of the pat batch and bring them over to your side. You're not. Um, they're going to think you're a little crazy, but you're going to do it anyway, and I salute you. Okay. Text 20. As the chariot of air carries an aroma from its source and immediately catches the sense of smell. Similarly, one who constantly engages in bhakti or devotional service in Krishna consciousness can catch the supreme soul who is equally present everywhere. Text 21. I am present in every living entity as the super soul. If one neglects or disregards that super soul everywhere and engages himself in the worship of the deity in the temple, that is simply imitation. Mm -hmm. One who worships the deity of Godhead in the temples, but does not know that the Supreme Lord as Paramatma, right, the super soul, is situated in every living entity's heart, must be in ignorance and is compared to one who offers oblations into ashes, not like not the fire. Text 23. One who offers me respect, but is envious of the bodies of others and is therefore a separatist, never attains peace of mind because of his inimical behavior towards other living entities. Yeah. And again, here, envious, I believe, means like antagonistic or inimical. Inimical. You know, I, yeah. Advancing in bhakti means that you start to learn to love everybody. You learn to love other people from other traditions, people who are atheistic, people who don't like you, you know, people of other... Um, uh, people of other uh, political parties, other country, et cetera, that, that those walls are now broken down. 23. One who offers me yes, respect. You just religious. 24. 24. My dear mother, even if he worships with proper rituals and paraphernalia, right? They get all the externals correct. A person who is ignorant of my presence in all living entities never pleases me by the worship of my deities in the temple. That's very so huge. This is huge, huh? Very important. Uh, deities in the temple, important. And uh, they're saying no, means nothing, actually. Performing their prescribed duties, one should worship the deity of the supreme personality of Godhead until one realizes my presence in his own heart and in the hearts of other living entities as well. Interesting here, right? Because it's not saying that one. You see, you know what I notice a lot, Raghuna? Is it seems. Tell like me. As. as uh, like as a society as a whole, we have trouble kind of like just finding the balance, you know, because you can hear these verses that we just read and say, that's right. And so those temples are not important at all. The real temple right. is the temple right. in the heart and forget all that stuff. And it's, you know, but here he's saying one should worship the deity, you know, 
one should do that, but understand why you're doing it. Understand what it's meant. Under, you know, it's, in other words, balance the whole thing out. Let's not swing back and forth. Oh, good. Yeah, good you, point. You know, let, let's understand what ritual is meant for. Let's understand its, its real deeper inner purpose. Let's perform it with that, all, all the while being aware of that inner purpose and being conscious of how we're behaving, you know, not just in that context, but outside that context in, in terms of our relationship, our relationships with others. Ritual, so, good, right? Mindless ritual, ritual, bad. There you go. Yeah. So right. here it's saying that it, it, here it gets to the purpose. One should worship the deity of the supreme personality of God until one realizes my presence in their own heart and in the hearts of other living entities as well. So wait, are they saying you don't worship the deity then? Well, you know, it, it's you wouldn't necessarily have to, but you still would be, you know, you would still be attracted to, but you might not have to. In other words, it is harder to perceive God everywhere than it is to perceive God in the deity. It's more challenging, right? Yeah. So, so here yeah. it's saying that you can worship that 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 form. And then you could come to a platform where you see God everywhere, and it wouldn't be necessary for you to worship that deity in the temple. Doesn't mean that you'd stop. But I get it. I get it. Yeah. I get it. All right. Text uh, twenty six. Six. As the blazing fire of death, I cause great fear to whoever. We're blazing a fire of death from we'll half sack. <laughs> We're blazing fire of death. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good name <laughs> i cause great fear to now you know what you do but now you just did you push the first domino because too but now everything i'm looking for names of van, <laughs> names of vans great fear from, I, I cause great from, fear from, to whoever makes the least discrimination we're least discrimination okay <laughs> between himself and other living entities because other of living entities because of differential outlook we're differential <laughs> outlook <laughs> From from Hobo Columbus. <laughs> Therefore, through charitable gifts and attention, as Hold well on, as let's let's discuss that verse rather than just joke we, about it. Okay. Let me so read it again without again. Yeah. thinking of it as band names. Ready? That's right. yeah. As blazing fire of death. That's a hard one to get out of my mind. As the blazing <laughs> fire of death, I cause great fear to whoever makes the least discrimination between himself and other living entities because of a differential outlook that is okay. a huge that is a important t-shirt yes. to be worn well you were saying earlier about being cradled right krishna cradles us so, so what what is that cradling is it just like some sentiment it's really about like a, a clearer vision right in other words even if my schnoz does get messed up on the thing it's okay because i'm not the schnoz right like even if Right. Is that what you, that's what you're thinking when you're like going down, right? Or like even if this woman doesn't know how to sew up my nose, you know, I, I'm not this. <laughs> I nose. was incredibly calm considering a woman <laughs> the, the nurse was freaking out. Right. So so the idea is that because we don't identify with the body, we don't even identify with the mind. One really, really understands that very deeply. One's becomes free of fear. Now the more now say within my own consciousness, I'm harboring animosity. And that's what it's saying here, right? When it said envy of other bodies, I'm I'm harboring animosity within me towards others for based on external reasons, right? You know, I don't like these people from this community. I don't like these people from that community, or or whatever. May I feel <sighs> threatened by another group, or or whatever? It's saying that. So this verse gets down to not only is that ignorance, not only does that prevent one from deeper spiritual experience, but it actually is the opposite it brings one to a state of fear right sure so as the blazing fire of death right i'm identifying with my body the more that i'm harboring animosity towards other that is solid material consciousness that is solid bodily consciousness where does bodily consciousness lead at least to fear of death mm. right you can't be free of the fear of death if you're deeply in that bodily con so us as the blazing versus them consciousness us versus them there is no them people there's you know all of yeah. us it's, there's no it's, justice there's just us uh, okay. <laughs> um there's there, there's um in that one of the most important i mean it's all important but really just like you know often featured section of bhagavatam is the story of prahlad right who was you know this boy who was the son of the you know demoniac ruler 
Hiranyakashipu. And what the, the, the real theme, you know, it's many chapters. I don't, I don't know, maybe seven chapters in, in, in uh, something like that in the seventh canto. Right. And, it, and it's an incredible story. You know, there's all kinds of action and, and so on. But so many teachings. But there's a real fundamental teaching that, that just keeps coming, coming back in it. And that is that, and, and actually, you know what? This is in the notes for the sage groups for, for this week, that begin this week, that I, I shared a couple of verses on this as a reference for it. But the, he, the, what, he, what was happening in that story was as, a, as this demoniac ruler, he wanted his son to be able to take over after him. And so he wanted his son to be indoctrinated um, in politics, basically. And, and the essence of that is recognizing, you know, seeing allies and enemies, seeing the world through that lens. Hmm. And Sri Prahlad, was his, in the womb, he had heard Bhagavatam, right, from Narada. And he just couldn't see things that way. And it was even kind of like, um, he's like, I heard about this kind of us and them mentality before. Now I'm actually seeing it, but right. I just don't, I just can't see the world that way. You know that mm -hmm. there's friends and enemies. He was, you know, and so that's really the the theme in in Prahlad's teachings, and um, and here we're seeing again how it, how that kind of separatism um, creates fear. I feel like we need to up upcycle that word demoniac because once you say demoniac, it goes into a world of fantasy. I like the idea of like an author or authoritarian, a despot, a um, what's another good word for like Mara? Wordsmith me a word. You know what I mean? Uh, well, Someone who's like like this uh, absolute I, I, I'm, tyrant. I'm, I'm, okay, tyrant. A tyrant. A tyrant. Like a person who's just like, this is the absolute authority. I'm going to kill all my enemies. These people, these uh, um, horrible rulers of the past. Um, and then we can think of like a Haranyakashipu. Because um, uh, once you say demoni a de demoniac leader, it goes right into the world of he's a little devil. Well, here's a quote that uses that word. This is from Pilate. Okay. okay, I mean, I get it. Yeah, I get yeah, it yeah. because there are so, demons in the universe. But, yeah. but, but, but in the Judeo-Christian thing, I always think of a little devil. But there, we, we can think of it in a very uh, practical way of like we've seen Hitlers, uh, Hitlers and Maos and we've done horrible things and the Stalins. We've done killed so many innocent people. Yeah. Um, and so when you think of Haranikashi Poo like that, it, it brings like sort of, it makes it sort of like real, real life. We've been there. Okay, now he, listen to this, Raghu. Prahlad Maharaj says to his father, and, and when, he, when he says this, he's like, his life is practically on the line here, right? Like, he's fearless, but he's pushed it with his father. Right. You know? and, and, and it's at, at a certain point, he's supposed to be buckling under in fear and just zipping up his mouth at least, you know? But he's just speaking truth. So he says, my dear father, please give up your demonic, de demoniac mentality. Do not discriminate in your heart between enemies and friends. Make your mind equipoise toward everyone. And now here's, listen to this, Arba. except for the uncontrolled and misguided mind, there is no enemy within this world. Boom. When one sees everyone on the platform of equality, one then comes to the position of worshiping the Lord perfectly. Me likey. Me likey. Right. Good one. Me likey. Okay. So it's, powerful, uh, it's a powerful way to be yeah. because let's face it. Once you don't like someone, you're disturbed in your mind. You're carrying mm -hmm. around an enemy. You're hoping for their misfortune, your enemy's misfortune. Mm -hmm. Once we have resentment, spite, anger, revenge going through the mind. Come on. There's no peace for me. Now, there's one more verse to complete this section. It may. Text 27. Next 27. Therefore, through charitable gifts and attention, as well as through friendly behavior and by viewing all to be alike, one should propitiate, propitiate me. Pro yeah, propitiate, propitiate me. What does that mean? Worship me? I Mary? think so. Mary? Worship me. Mary. That, that, that was in that Doors song, right? Get on the ball, Mara. Come on. <laughs> I know. Sorry, sorry. I've got it here. She's, uh, like, she's much more reclined today than she she's very reclined. She's like leaning back. I yeah. <laughs> it means to win or regain the favor of by doing something that pleases them. Okay. All right, that's good. Propitiate. Okay, propitiate. So um, read that again. Um, 
Therefore, Therefore, through charitable gifts and attention, as well as through friendly behavior, and by viewing all to be alike, one should propitiate me, who abide in all creatures as their very self. Very interesting, right? So, right. And, you know, I think that also has to be carefully understood. But let's, let's just see what it's saying. It's saying through charitable gifts and through attention, right? Being Does it sensitive, mean charitable gifts kind. to God or to each other? <laughs> well, it, it's saying as well as friendly behavior and by viewing all to be alike. So to, to everyone, right? Oh. You, you're having that friendly behavior towards everyone. You're, you're giving gifts. You're, you're attentive to, you know, to the um, experience of others. Uh, he's saying through that, one should propitiate me, right? One should win me, right? Win my heart or please me. Okay. Who abides in all creatures as their very self. So it's, it's in, a, in one sense, it's saying that if you're kind to everyone and good to everyone, then actually that's a way of worshiping God, right? Um, and, 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 but it's done with that, it's not like God's out of the picture. You know, some people might see it that way too, right? It's just like, you know, service to man is service to God. Only if you have the conception of God and that's your purpose and intention in doing it, then 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 it all comes together. And so that's you know what, what? it's true. About here. Without the idea of a separate conception of God, then service of man it gets limited. It, it it's got a ceiling. It's got a lower ceiling. Yeah, it's got a lower ceiling. Okay. So, so let's just, let's, why don't we spend some time with just what we heard so far today, right? Okay. It, it was, it was a whole section that was more or less saying that if you want to please me, then you really need to see me everywhere, see me within the heart of everyone, recognize that spiritual oneness and um, always be acting on that. And that's most important to me. And honestly, the rituals and all of that, without that, it doesn't, it's mm -hmm. totally unsatisfying. If you're doing the rituals to come to this stage, that's what the rituals are for, then that's very pleasing. Mm -hmm. But your external religious ceremonies, your external religious demonstrations, they have no value. They're like pouring ghee on ashes rather than a fire. Right, they're unreceived, unaccepted, unless they're done with this intention and with this yeah. type of, the, the, at least for the purpose of the development of this type of vision. That's what the, it's the, all about. The, the metric for our love of, of God is uh, validated by how we uh, treat the people that God puts in our life. Yeah. And sometimes he doesn't put the sweetest people in our life. Sometimes he puts the most dear. Sometimes he puts atheists. Sometimes he puts antagonists. Sometimes he puts agnostics, and sometimes he puts agnostic front in our life. <laughs> He's done it for all of us. <laughs> That's a band. I mean, it goes to the group up with. But, they, but, but, but how, how am I going to deal with them? How am I going to treat them? And you're going to what? You're gonna, you might get a whole swath. Is that a word? Swath. Swath. A people. Can you say a, a swath, swath of people? A wide swath of people at the dinner table over the holidays. <laughs> really how are you going to deal with them? It, okay. Right? And you really get that different vibe. Some people are like, oh, yeah, good job, Mara. Yeah. God's a little blue coward boy. And some people are like, what? And you're going to get all of it. And how are you going to relate to it? Hmm. It's going to be interesting. How are you going to relate to these people? How are you going to treat these people? How are you going to like, are you going to resent them for making, maybe trying to humiliate you? Some people are just offended. Once you say, I believe in God now, they're just like, it drives them crazy. Hmm. Hmm? Yeah. And some people are going to be like, oh, you believe in God? What God? Not my God. And they're really hurt and offended by that. Hmm. Oh, it's going to be a great Christmas, a great holiday season for you guys. Now, um, we mentioned uh, last week, I guess it was Friday or whatever, we, yeah. we quoted this verse, Archi yame bahar ye, pujam ye shudade yate, natad bhakteshu chanyeshu, sabhaktaha, prakrita, smritaha, that a person who very faithfully engages in worship in the deity in the, of the deity in the temple, but who does not know how to behave towards devotees or people in general mm -hmm. is called a prakrita bhakta or a kanishta adhikari, just a beginner a material, literally, uh, bak, it says bhakta prakrita. It, it literally means like a materialistic bhakta, right. materialistic devotee. We called, remember we, we, the slang we gave that last week? Uh, wannabe. New Jack, wannabe. New Jack, wannabe, yeah. Yeah. So it's, 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 you know, so there's that superficial 
um, external demonstration. And a lot of times it's not uncommon for this mentality to be within the temple atmosphere, right? Where right. someone wants to demonstrate their own piety in a way and, and uh, be recognized, you know, for it. Um, and, and, but they really lack uh, that deeper. Uh, there's a couple of things I could read here, Robert. Okay. I got Hit some me. things Hit from me. the, from the 11th Canto. Let's, let's first read this. And this talks about, cause we were hearing now that we should be able to see God, not just in this, um, temple, not just where that particular shape or form is, but that has to be broadened. And three places were mentioned. One was everywhere. <laughs> so that's a, that's a wide swath. Right, that that is the Paramatma God is within every atom. So I'm, there's no, but also within the heart of every living being, and within one's own heart. And so, this is this is um, from the eleventh canto, eleventh chapter, and I'm going to read text forty-two through forty-five. This is Krishna speaking to Uddhava. Right, and he says, "O Saint Uddhava, please know that you may worship me, in the sun." in fire, in brahmanas, in cows, hmm. in Vaishnavas, other bhakti yogis, in the sky, in the wind, in water, earth, in the individual soul, and in all living entities. Interesting, right? Yeah, it's, with... it's, it's super interesting. Now he's, now he's going to tell how in each case. He says, my dear Uddhava, one should worship me within the sun, by chanting selected Vedic mantras and performing worship and offering obeisances. You've seen that before in India where people, the first time they see the sun in the day? Yeah, 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 yeah. They bow down, right? It's a nice, it's a nice thing to do. Bow down, mister. And there's, there's many, um, many mantras for worshiping the sun. One Om main Mitraya Namaha. The oh. sun is our dear most friend. That's the first mantra of Surya Namaskar. There you go. One may worship me within fire by offering oblations to the ghee, with ghee, of ghee, into the fire. One may worship me among the brahmanas by, being, by respectfully receiving them as guests, even when uninvited. Right? That's why I enjoyed having you over this past week, Rebbe. It was a magical time. <laughs> it Thank really you. was. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, even when uninvited, I can be worshipped within the cows. How so, Robert? Um, well, in a lot of ways, actually. You can actually scratch them under the chin. Believe it or not, I'm not being making a joke. That is a way to worship the cow. Scratching them under the chin, feeding them. Mm -hmm. hmm? Yeah. People I, do pooj poojas to them, actually, also. Yeah. Taking care of them, maintaining them. Circumambulating them. Circumambulating a cow. Yeah, but here it mentions... Um, I can be worshipped within the cows by offering of grass and other suitable grains mm. and paraphernalia for the pleasure and the health of the cows. All right. One may worship me within the Vaishnavas. Within the Mara, did we ever take you to the Goshala? Goshala is a place where they take care of cows in India. There's a Goshala in Vrindavan. I think Lori Eco Village. Yeah, I went there. Well, I went no. to the Eco Village one too. Yeah, but do you ever do the one where you make these uh, balls out of molasses and grains and you feed the cows? Did you ever do no, that? No, I didn't get to do that. Well, that's good. Mm, uh, Lori Pag, give me a thumbs up if you do that. Yes. Black strap molasses. Black strap molasses and grains. Cows love it. Mm, nothing like satisfying the cows. When yeah. you make the cows happy, you feel happy. Mm. Um, one may worship me within the Vaishnavas by offering loving friendship to them and honoring them in all respects. Through steady meditation, I am worshiped within the inner self, within, within the inner space of the heart. So if you want to worship God in the heart, it takes that deep meditation. And within the air, I can be worshiped by knowledge that prana, the life air, is the chief among elements. I'm worshiped within water by offerings of water itself. You've done that, Raghu? Yeah, yes, on a regular basis. Do you? <laughs> no. You have done it before. You, when you go into the holy river and then you make an offering of that water itself. You right? take the water, you put it in your hands, you spin it around clockwise, and you're offering the very sacred water to the to right to the back deity into the back yeah. into the water. And, into the and and by doing so, you're offering 
your love, really. Mm-hmm. More than the water. The water doesn't need your water. The water's got it. It's it is water. water. <laughs> it is water. It is water. It's got a lot of water, but it wants to see your love. That's right. The deity. The, so this the goes Ganga, back to, to David Suzuki's thing, right? It's like he was saying, like, if you see this way, we'll treat each other better and, and you know, and we'll treat the earth better and so on. Here it's saying that you'll you'll be able to actually understand God through this type of cultivating this. It's These rituals are ways of cultivating the mentality. That's the whole point, right? So I'm worshipped within water by offering of water itself. Among other elements, such as flowers and Tulsi leaves, and I think that's offered to the water. Is that what he's saying? I'm worshipped within water by offerings of water itself, along with other elements, such as flowers and Tulsi leaves. And one may worship me within, within the earth by proper application of confidential seed mantras, secret mantras, Raghunath. Secret mantras. It always goes back to secret stuff. Okay. We're, I don't understand that. Say that again. You worship I, the I don't earth? understand it so well, but it says one may worship me within the earth by proper application of confidential seed mantras. Seed I mantras thought it was going to say prop, worship the earth by proper seeds, like heirloom yeah. seeds. Well, grow you a know, special maybe garden. We, could look at, we could look at the Sanskrit. Maybe it says by seeds but you're you know here be it's a being bad translated translation seed mantra. i'm not saying i thought they're gonna say by building a cob house you can worship me by building an earth house um that's not what it says it's not it's not, it's, uh, it's it's mantras okay. okay um one may worship me within the individual living entity by offering food and other enjoyable substances that's what i did when you came over Rogan. right you did you, you offered me um do dosas doshas 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 no and kitchery do you do you remember what you ate when you came over here yeah kitchery and doshas duh no we didn't Weren't those doshas? doshas we had parattas oh parattas parattas yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it was okay. great i felt um, worshipped especially good. when you read to me and you said lay down <laughs> lay down he laid me on that couch <laughs> lay down <laughs> and what? just read to me <laughs> now i'm gonna read you a story Okay, one may that that's how you do it, right? You feed them and then and then you read them a nice story. Yeah. One may worship me within the individual living entities by offering food and other enjoyable substances, and one may worship. I'm me available within... for rent over the uh, holiday season. <laughs> you rent me. me out, bring me to your house, feed me, and have me lay down, and then you can read me stories. Okay. And one all may right. worship me within all living entities by seeing the super soul within all of them, thus manifesting equal vision, otherwise called Mara Hatsi, equal vision. Samadarshana. Oh, my marriage is on it now. It's like Damn. every time we throw something at her, she's. You got know what? It. The more I'm hanging out with her the last couple of days, I'm realizing she knows a lot. Yeah, she knows a lot. You know, she doesn't speak a lot. If no. I know something, I share. Uh, I, I like brag about it. Like, check this out. Check out this shloka. She doesn't. She doesn't talk. Mara's silent. She's one of those people uh, drive me crazy because I never know how what she's feeling. You know, those people don't speak. If you mm-hmm. if I'm sick, you know about it. I'll be like, my stomach, my stomach. And I'm just letting the whole world know about my stomach. But Mara's just like silent, walks around silently. Like, are you happy? Are you sad? Are you like effulgent? Are you like over the moon? You'll never know. Well, you got to like drill that. into her. So she knows she's got a lot stored in that brain. She's got this one of these brahminical brains that retain what she hears. OK, well, Stomadarsha. I got something more for her brain to retain. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm not saying you have to repeat it or anything like that. So, so now, Rogo, I'm going to read another section, okay? By the way, Equal Vision Records, that's where we came up with that name, Samadarshana, from yeah, that Sama verse. Darshana. Yeah. E- equal Vision. Five, Sama 18, Darshan. Text 518, Bhagavad Gita. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, now I'm going to read again from the 11th canto. This is 11th canto, third chapter, text 47 through 55. And you know what we're going to hear here, Raghunath? Hear, hear? Did you just say hear, hear? You know what we're, we're going to hear, hear. <laughs> here here go ahead what we're, we're going to hear about the entire really this gives a very good summary of what deity worship is all about okay how it's meant to be performed the purpose okay. of it where it leads all okay. right so the rituals that are done in temples or people do them in their homes they have their own temples they do their worship this is how it's meant to be done understood practiced and what, what it's meant to lead to so uh here we go here, here. One, one who desires to quickly cut the knot of false ego, which binds the spirit soul, should worship the Supreme Lord Keshava. 
that means Krishna, right? By the regulations found in Vedic literatures such as the Tantras. Okay, so even right there there's a lot said, right? Like that it's a fast way of cutting the ego. Because why? Because when you do the deity worship, you're doing it, it's, it's a ritual that's laid out that cultivates the attitude, I'm the servant, I'm the servant, I'm happy. Well, cut the ego from Portsmouth. <laughs> well, that's not a good bad. one too. Cut the ego. <laughs> Cut the ego. So, but that's but, so. It's an effective way of, on a daily basis, cultivating the mood of service. I'm the servant. I'm the servant. So it's cutting the false ego. It's very effective if you do it daily, regularly, uh, steadily. It, it 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 becomes firmly rooted in the consciousness. So again, one who desires to quickly cut the knot of false ego, which binds the spirit soul, should worship the supreme Lord Keshava by the regulations found in the Vedic literature, such as the tantras. That's the next point. You don't just make it up. You have to follow it the right way. Right? right. And it's not that just anyone can just do this. It's actually, to do it seriously, you're actually meant to be you're given the blessings to do it. Right? So the next thing it says is, having obtained the mercy of the spiritual master, the guru, mm -hmm. right, who reveals to the, dis to the disciple the injunctions of Vedic scriptures, the devotee should worship the Supreme Personality Godhead in the particular personal form, in Raghunath's case, sweet baby Krishna, in the particular personal form of the Lord that the devotee finds most attractive. Yep. Right? So it, it, the heart is fully going into it, right? So for you, for you, that would be sweet baby Krishna. For Mara, what would it be? Krishna in Mathura. A little bit older, Krishna? Yeah. A little older. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> After after cleansing oneself, okay, first you have to bathe. Right. One purifies the body by performing pranayama. Right. Then you, you've taken a bath, then you sit, you do pranayama. You're getting your consciousness ready to be absorbed in the ritual, right? Because that's what it's all about, absorption. So you perform pranayama, a breathing exercise that settles the mind, right? And then uh, bhuta shuddhi. What is bhuta shuddhi, Raga? Uh, the cleaning of the uh, of the uh, elements or the uh, of the body. Yeah, and and, right. and generally that's yeah, it's it's like it's a way of setting one's consciousness clear. It's kind of leaving. The, I'm not this body. I am the soul within the body. There's a contemplation that, and through this contemplation, one's leaving their external identity aside while, for the time that I enter into the ritual. Right. Yeah. That can be done through mantra and so on. Um. And then it says, and marking the body with the sacred tea lock for protection. All right, so you put on your different markings in the different places in the body. One should sit in front of the deity and worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Okay, so there's a seriousness into this. It says, then the devotee should gather whatever ingredients for worship the deity are available. Make ready the offerings, make ready the ground, make ready your mind and the deity. You sprinkle your sitting place with water for purification. You prepare the bathing water and other paraphernalia. The devotee should then place the deity on his proper place, both physically and within one's own mind. Right. So it's not just something's happening externally, but something's happening internally. And um, concentrate their attention and mark the deity's heart and other parts of the body with tilak. Mm. Then he should offer worship with the appropriate mantra. Okay, now this is going somewhere. Just hang in there, Rabbi. Okay, I like it. Stay with me. One should worship the deity along with each of the limbs of his transcendental body, his weapons such as Sudar Sudarshan Chakra. Those, you know, if you're worshiping the form of Lord Vishnu, his own bodily features and his personal associates. One should worship each of these transcendental aspects of the Lord by its own mantra and with offerings of water to wash the feet, scented water, water to wash the mouth, water for bathing. Fine clothing and ornaments, fragrant oils, valuable necklaces, unbroken barley corns, flower garlands, incense, and lamps. It's. It, it may sound a little weird to some of you, but if in a traditional Indian household, if someone came to your home, you'd be offering them all these things. These are the normal things that you offer. Yeah, it, it's. It's like it's service uh, done. You know, like oh, you've come to my home, let me please you. Oh, you've come into my heart, let me please you, like that. Having thus completed the worship in all its aspects in accordance with the prescribed regulations one should then honor the deity of the lord with prayers and offer obeisances to him by bowing down now it gets really interesting okay 
the worshiper should become fully absorbed in meditating upon himself as the eternal servant of the Lord and should thus perfectly worship the deity, remembering that the deity is also situated within his heart. Okay? So, like, that's the idea that I'm feeling the presence of God in my heart. By bringing my mind to God in this form, it's increased my experience, my awareness of God within myself, within my own heart. Um, and then he says, then he should take the remnants of the deity's paraphernalia, such as flower garlands, upon his head and respectfully put the deity back in his own place, thus concluding the worship. You know how I was always wearing a little flower in my hat in the summertime? Yeah. That's because I put it on my head because I take it from the puja that we do in the morning and pop it mm. right in there. And then, uh, and then he concludes, thus the worshiper, the worshiper of the Supreme Lord should recognize that the personality of Godhead is all-pervading and should worship him through his presence in fire, the sun, water, and other elements. In the heart of the great one, of the guests one receives, in one's home, and also in one's own heart. In this way, the worshiper will very soon achieve liberation. Okay, so it, I just thought those were interesting. Uh, I think the verses that I read earlier, they were in answer, they came in a later chapter, but I think they were in the answer to this, right? Like, how do I worship God in fire? How do I worship God in sun? Then that answer came later. But those are beautiful verses, huh? Yeah, really nice. This, this is, this is, you know, there's a religious aspect, the ritual, but the whole point is it brings you to spirituality, right? It's like it can't, you can't just if you're just merely into externals, we can call that religious. But when you begin to realize the spiritual reality, that that spirit, God is within everything, God is within every living being, God is within my own heart. That's called spirituality. I like the fact that there's all the all these like sort of actual practical things that you can do to prepare yourself for your yeah. worship yeah you know because the yogis they, they understood the mind and they did practices and they analyzed how they affect the mind right you know and then they say okay if you want to do this the whole point is it's about absorbing the mind deeply not just doing the ritual externally it really has no point unless it begins to transform one internally okay, you know in my other? world of in my world of busyness yeah, this yeah. is just like a, a, a very peculiar time historically for me because I'm always busy. You know that I'm just mm -hmm. busy, or the kids, and our, um, and um, because my uh, teaching in uh, in Switzerland was canceled because they had some COVID regulation, I just have a days off now. And then also my wife's got the kids until Christmas, so it's like. This is for the first time ever, I've like I've got nothing to do. <laughs> I've got nothing to do. Mary's like, I'm going to work this morning. What are you going to do? I was like, nothing. I've got nothing to do. I've got, it's just so weird. I've never been in this position. I guess I'll yeah, try anyway. not to injure yourself anymore. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. well, that's what happens when I get time off. I just figure out ways to injure myself. I can't handle it. <laughs> All right, Mary, do we have any takeaways today? We do. We've got some good ones today. Some good ones. They're all There's, good. They're good. They are all good. There's danger at every step. Padam padam yadvi padam natasham. That's a cup. That's a yeah. mug. Krishna cradles us. He oh. does. Krishna cradles us. The more we harbor, you gotta animals. let him cradle you. You gotta let him cradle. You can't fight the cradle. Don't you gotta fight let the cradle. We don't, don't fight the cradle. <laughs> don't fight the cradle. <laughs> The more we harbor animosity towards others, the more we fear death. It's true. Interesting, but yes. You can't have peace if you have enemies. Mm -hmm. No. Rituals are intended to bring you vision to see God in everyone. There we go. Rituals are intended. Say that again. It's not a, a t-shirt, but it's... Rituals are intended to bring you vision to see God in everyone. That would be maybe one of our worst sellers on the Wisdom Sages uh, <laughs> store. It's a little yeah. log. Yeah. But it's good. The, yeah, it's, just not it's a, good. It's a, sleeve, it's, a, it's, it's a tank top, but people just aren't <laughs> buying it. I don't, I don't know why. We had a ladies' version. We made sweats. Did, did, also, did we do it no in the wrong purchased. color? <laughs> is it the wrong? Maybe it's a color thing. <laughs> the metric of our love of God is measured by how we treat others. Sure. Sure. This one's a little bit simpler. Ritual good. Mindless ritual bad. <laughs> Boom. Boom. That's a t-shirt. That's a <laughs> neck tattoo. That's there when it is. hits the highest elements of like <laughs> sutrific genius. Like you've put like that word sutrific. Ritual sutrific. good. 
Rich, yeah, it's a little caveman, but it's simple. <laughs> ritual yeah. good, mindless ritual bad. <laughs> then, then you put the, then you get it on your neck. There is no enemy but the enemy in the mind. Mm-hmm. Did we say that? Yeah, well, I read yeah. the, Ruggle, I read you that incredible verse from Prahlad Marge. Like, yeah, <laughs> pretty, pretty Prahlad chat today. board. Thinking about my nose. <laughs> All right, the last one. I am not the schnoz. I'm not the schnoz. I'm not the schnoz. I'm not the schnoz. We're not. The old schnoz. Who is the old schnozola, Ruggana? Oh, they call um, the old schnozola. W.C. Fields or something? No? Or Jimmy Durante? Jimmy Durante. Yeah, Jimmy Durante. Jimmy Durante. I don't know Jimmy Durante. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining us on this Monday, this wonderful Monday, this coming out of the closet Monday. We're going to come out. We're going to tell the world. I worship Lord Krishna. I'm a, a, I'm a servant of the servant of the devotees of Lord Krishna. This is the day. This is the week of holiday cheer and of coming out of the closet and sharing. The, yes, you have to tell them. You have to tell them I'm on a path. It might sound weird, but my God is a blue cowherd child who frolics with his friends and other cowherd girls and boys. I worship a plant called Tulsi, and I uh, eat with my hands. These are all the important, <laughs> the important elements of our spiritual practice. We won't get into other hygiene practice. We won't get into other hygiene practices. We'll just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Krishna. Thank you, everybody, for joining. All right, you know you're getting serious when, when you, instead of writing OMG, you write OMK. That's How many like people a, write OMK? That's, that's like a, a landmark kind of thing. That's like your next, that's your graduation. That's bap, yeah. uh, baptism or... Um, yeah, it's a rite uh, of passage. It's a rite of passage when you start writing OMK. Or it, it, The first rite of passage is when you start namaste even the guy who pumped your gas. Oh, thank you, thank you. And the next one is when you write OMK, when you say out loud, oh my Krishna. <laughs> that's when you know you've... you've Fully drank the Kool-Aid there. Mm. Ah, anyway, thanks everybody for joining us. You know what to do. You got Q's or A's. We have question and answer day Saturday. We're actually <laughs> running low on Q's. All our Q's that people said people maybe everyone just like fully you should always have Q's. There's no there's not no one point in your spiritual life where you should not have questions. So you write your questions in. We're gonna answer them Saturday on questions and answer day. You write to Mara at Wisdom of the Sages 108 at gmail.com. And um, are we still doing the uh, jelly? Yamuna Jelly's jelly pack? Is that yeah, still happening? Yeah, you want to send a good Christmas gift, you go to happygirlkitchen.com. And uh, maybe you'll get them by Christmas at this point. It's getting late. Um, or um, Are you allowed to say Christmas or do you got to say the holidays? Whatever. <laughs> HappyGirlKitchen.com. Use the coupon code WOTS108, Wisdom of the Sages. WOTS108 to get 10% off. And you can get from our very own favorite Zoomer, Jelly Maker, you will get a jelly pack filled with sweet Kostuba flavored jelly, spicy Raganov jelly, quiet jelly, Mara, <laughs> and um, some other stuff. What are, A sage. What was that? A sage. <laughs> I don't know, Robert. It's okay. It's no, there was a sage there. elixir. Oh, there, there was a, is this called Tell a shrub? shrub? A shrub. shrub. A shrub. A sage shrub. shrub. So, um, yes. Thanks for everybody. And now we will dance and chant the holy names. <laughs>